Welcome to the Rochester, New Hampshire History Podcast, a monthly show that will shine a light on a piece of history that has been all but forgotten. Did you ever endure a steamy, hot summer and think it was the hottest summer ever? In July 1911, New Hampshire and the rest of the eastern United States suffered through an 11-day heat wave that some claim was the worst weather event that occurred in New England. Throughout June of that year, the weather in New Hampshire and the rest of the East had been relatively normal. However, on July 4th, a hot wind blew in from the West, causing the temperature to rise quickly. In Providence, Rhode Island, the mercury rose 11 degrees in just 30 minutes. For 11 days, the punishing heat lingered, temperatures rose, and records were set all throughout New England. During the heat wave, crowds in cities gathered around public thermometers so they could watch the mercury rise. Many collapsed from heat stroke during the day. At night, parents were seen walking their babies to keep them awake. They were fearful that their babies would die in their sleep from the heat. Some of the tracks used by trolleys and trains became bent and twisted from the heat. On the second day of the brutal high temperatures, at least 17 people died from drowning after fleeing to the rivers and ponds. Industry came to a grinding halt as it was too hot to work in the factories. In many places, the mail was not delivered due to the rising temperatures. Many slept on the roofs or slept outdoors. In Boston, over 5,000 people slept on the Boston Common. Horses overcome from the heat dropped dead in the streets or in their stables. Pitch leaked from wooden boats, making them unsafe. Many paved streets bubbled with melted tar. Trees lost their leaves, grass turned brown, and dairy cow's milk dried up. It was a steamy and sweaty time for all. The heat wave ended after 11 days when powerful thunderstorms swept across the northeast, bringing relief from the misery. How did Rochester fare during this time? They used a bit of humor to help get by. The Rochester Courier reported the only positive development from the heat was the following. At least we got rid of one awful bore this week. The man who continually asked, is it hot enough for you? Has been overcome by the heat and has fallen by the roadside. Nobody has the nerve anymore to profound this question. The following was also reported in the Rochester Courier. At a house at the corner of Charles and Liberty Streets, on the side where the sun does not strike afternoon at all, where large elm and maple trees give complete shade, the mercury stood at 98 degrees at 5 p.m. on Monday. It was reported at the City Hotel that 113 degrees was the figure reached on the piazza. There was not a thing to afford relief from the burning rays either. It did not cool off at night. Many slept on roofs or in hammocks in their yards, and some even on the ground. Babies were put out on the sidewalks and shady spots in their carriages. One family stayed in the cellar all day until the sun was low. Gardens are suffering from the intense heat, everything wilting. In view of the impending poor hay crop, a good many people will be congratulating themselves that automobiles don't eat hay. A Rochester lady states that she saw an egg fried on the hot concrete at York Beach last week when the thermometer registered 102 degrees in the shade. This man should be punished. A man from North Barrington left his horse standing in the hot sun on North Main Street last week with the thermometer registering 102 in the shade. The five-month-old son of Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Willie of Glenwood Avenue was overcome by the heat while carriage riding with his parents and died about an hour after arriving home. The high temperatures contributed to Rochester's first fatal car accident. On Sunday, July 9, 1911, around 9 o'clock in the morning, Thomas J. Morin and his wife Minnie were driving to York Beach to escape the heat. They drove through a railroad crossing in Rochester and was struck by a train. The Morin's car was totaled. Mr. Morin survived the accident. His wife died instantly The heat wave ended in Rochester and elsewhere on July 16th. All in Rochester would remember the 1911 heat wave for the rest of their lives.
This ends the podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please email bobgriffinpodcast at gmail.com and come back next month for another episode of Rochester, New Hampshire History.